JPEG Mafia has been teasing the prospect of a brand new solo album for over a year now, but it appears as if we are closer than ever to hearing some new Peggy in 2024. Peggy's last solo album was LP, a phenomenal project that dropped back in October of 2021, but since then, his popularity has really reached new heights. In between LP and this upcoming record, he dropped a collab project with the legendary Danny Brown called Scaring the Hose, which to no one's surprise was outstanding. But there is nothing like a solo JPEG Mafia album. And so much has already happened with this record's rollout, which is crazy because we don't even know what this project is going to be called yet. Okay, well maybe that's the title, we don't know officially, we'll get into that in a second. But from finally working with his idol Kanye West to having an intense Twitter beef with Freddie Gibbs, a lot has gone down in the lead up to Peggy's next album. I have just about all the details we have regarding the project, so without further ado, let's get into what we know about JPEG Mafia's upcoming solo album. Our story really begins in late 2022 slash January 2023, where JPEG Mafia would go on record to say a few times both on Twitter and in interviews that he was going to be dropping three albums in 2023. Fans wouldn't have to wait too long in 2023 to hear the first record, which was the long-awaited collab between JPEG Mafia and Danny Brown called Scaring the Hose. But it wouldn't be until fall of 2023 till fans started hearing about the second, which wasn't really a problem. People weren't complaining in the fan base because we just got scaring the hose in the spring and the DLC, AKA the deluxe in the summertime. JPEG Mafia, he was feeding the fans well. And in the fall, like I said, he started teasing the second project by cryptically tweeting out lyrics from one of his earliest albums in his career before he was even JPEG Mafia, the ghost pop tape. And this would fulfill the second album of 2023, the remastered edition of the Ghost Pop Tape. Around this time of the remaster dropping, it was really strange because as a fan, I was really enjoying having this thing on streaming finally, and I enjoyed a lot of the remaster, but you could tell Peggy was almost creatively stifled and frustrated with the fact that he, he was working on something that was old, already done. He wanted to move forward. He would say in a tweet basically that, you know, this, this is something I did solely for the fans working on an older project. I don't like doing this and I'm moving forward. And he would once again confirm that the solo album was on the way, saying that the next album is the next installment of me growing as an artist. So Peggy confirmed there once again that the solo album was still coming, promised for 2023, but by the time the year came to a close, he would not get around to releasing a solo project. Peggy would be very open with fans about the progress of the record though. He would put out a statement on January 1st, 2024, checking in on the fans and saying essentially that the album was coming, he just needed a little bit more time. Peggy would say this, took a break for the holidays. I'm finishing the album I was supposed to release this year. My actual plan for this album was to release it on January 1st. I was going to say nothing and then do a fake apology on the 31st and then surprise drop on the 1st today, but I always rush to finish things. I apologize to my fans. I promised an album to this year. My album will be out 2024. I just have to keep working to make it as best as possible for you. Happy holidays to all the people in my life I love and that love me and happy new year to all, even my enemies and their ugly ass kids and families. I will see you all next year. But from that statement on, we wouldn't hear too much from JPEG Mafia anymore as assumingly he was working on the record, but there's something in January that would spark him to go into a rant. Around this time, Kanye West was starting the rollout for his collab album with Ty Dolla Sign called Vultures. Now for context, JPEG Mafia has cited Kanye on numerous occasions as being his biggest inspiration musically, his idol in a sense. And when asked almost every single time in an interview who is the artist he would like to collaborate with the most, he has nine times out of 10 given the answer, Kanye. My friend Rhythmic Reason actually on YouTube, he has a compilation of every time JPEG Mafia has mentioned Kanye in an interview on his YouTube channel. So go check that out if you want to. Point being, of course, JPEG Mafia, He's talked about it time and time again, how badly he wants to work with Kanye. 
With the release of Scaring the Hose in 2023, like I said in the intro, JPEG Mafia's popularity, it had reached new heights. In the Peggy Kanye situation, it had essentially reached a point where it was like Kanye has to be willingly and openly just ignoring this guy and his talents. People have consistently said for years now that Ye has really tapped into the underground rap scene, so it was like he had to have heard about this guy. How the fuck has he not given him the call? So it appears that Peggy had picked up on this concept, as he would finally take to Twitter and call out Kanye essentially on January 14th, saying this, Kanye West, I respect you, but the way you acknowledge other people who have less to offer you than me makes me feel a way. I'm a scientist in the lab, a surgeon bruh, and you skip over me for other artists that are getting their baby mamas fucked on camera. I want to make money, fuck these motherfuckers. He would also criticize Kanye and Ty's lead track for the upcoming album, Everybody, saying, how do you got all these people in a room you're paying that are doing all this just for you to make a Backstreet Boys cover, which is pretty funny. But his main claim here was this, I'm a lot more talented than the people you have on your team, and I'm also a lot less problematic, specifically calling out Freddie Gibbs, which we'll get into that in a little bit. The next day, Peggy would take to Twitter apologizing for any fans he offended, because um, he did also make some other claims in that rant that they're JPEG Mafia coded, you know, some people got pissed off. But um, he would essentially wrap things up saying, I'm sorry, I just, I wanted to work with my idol. Um, and things kind of went quiet and people were like, damn, you know, maybe one day Kanye will open his eyes and we'll get a collab between these two. And then randomly, about a week after this, four days go by and JPEG Mafia just uploads pictures to Twitter of him and Kanye. Peggy would post multiple pictures of this iconic photo shoot on socials with Kanye and the titanium teeth in the Burzum shirt, which is just insanely ironic. This was an awesome moment that really came out of nowhere. Like no one expected this at all. And then it's like, holy shit, Peggy's working with his idol. And there's a big crossover between Ye and Peggy fans. So it was like, we're gonna get so much great fucking music out of this for most of the fan base. This was a fucking iconic moment. But then you had this very small, yet loud minority who were just like fucking devastated. A lot of people in JPEG Mafia's fan base, just due to the nature of his lyrics being very chronically online and, you know, mentioning a lot of political figures, you got to really be tapped into the internet humor and everything to understand. You know, it, it attracts a certain type of person who can be very fucking annoying. Annoying in the sense that they see their supposed favorite artists who they've supported for years get to finally work with one of the biggest artists in the world, their biggest inspiration, and they make it all about themselves and use it as a launching point for a character assassination of a person they actually know nothing about personally. People, of course, have a right to not like Kanye anymore due to his anti-Semitic comments in late 2022. The claims he made in various interviews were extremely fucked up, out of line, and overall really ill-informed, and I can understand why someone wouldn't be able to separate the art from the artist. But to have a complete meltdown and turn on Peggy for working with him, after he said time and time again how big of a goal, how much it means to him, and also just to get that fat paycheck, like, I don't know if these people were ever real fans, like fucking ever. Regardless of what some annoying people on Reddit had to say, JPEG Mafia would make some fire-ass contributions to Vultures 1, having production credits on the tracks Stars, Fuck Some, Beg Forgiveness, and my personal favorite, King. But this whole like culmination of a sector of his fan base turning on him, it would really upset Peggy, and understandably so, and he would voice his frustrations in another rant, this time on the 17th of February. It all started pretty normally, Peggy just posted some fire ass pics with a caption that said working on that album. But then Peggy would start saying all sorts of funny ass shit. He would troll about a Death Grips feature being on this upcoming album, which I doubt is actually real. And then he also would say that the upcoming album is going to be titled White People vs. Accountability or All White People Are Sociopaths. And this is what I'm saying when I'm like, where the fuck are these people coming from acting like JPEG Mafia is this politically correct fucking angel? Like, this is the man we are talking about here. This is the man you're all upset with for fucking working with Kanye. Like, fuck off. 
But the main point of this rant was Peggy calling out a double standard between himself and Tyler, the creator. Um, Tyler had recently hung out with Kanye at Charlie Wilson's Hollywood star pressing or whatever the fuck you call that when they put the star down in Hollywood. But he would be seen with Kanye and take pictures with him and everything. And he was saying, like, where's the outrage for Tyler? Like, why don't people come at him and say, oh, he's a Nazi? And to that, I think, you know, my answer is just like, it's Peggy's fans going at him. It's just the nature of his music and the subject matter and the, you know, cheeky humor online, chronically online shit. It's just the the type of people he attracted. A sector of them. I think, honestly, most of us are 70% of JPEG Mafia. 60% of JPEG Mafia fans are probably fucking normal. I don't even know if I'm including that motherfucker. I don't know. But moving away from this rant really quick, I want to talk about three potential track names we have for this album. Because following this rant, Peggy would post more on socials, be that on his Instagram story or even on Twitter, posting some photo shoots and some pictures where he's looking like a real cutie in Walgreens. And um, he's basically dropped a few hints towards what some tracks may be titled on this brand new album we're all anticipating. So first off, I talked about him posting some pics. He did have that photo shoot at like the CVS location or whatever the fuck. And the caption on socials for those pics would be Sweet Tooth. I don't know. That just kind of sounds like it could have been a fucking name for a song or something. I just, I'll mention it. What is the harm in mentioning it? There is no harm. But then he would also post these screenshots on two separate occasions where he's listening to audio files on his phone. And the audio file names were this. Uh, the first one was Act 42 Down, and the second one was Act 30 Allah. So I don't know about the Act 42, Act 30, that may be just how he uh, names and organizes files on his fucking computer and shit, but potentially two track names there, Down and Allah, and then, I don't know, Sweet Tooth is kind of a, it's a stretch. But what are we documenting things for if we're not documenting Peggy posing in a Walgreens? Why the fuck am I here? This is why they pay me. But around the time of the Walgreens photo shoot thingy or whatever the fuck, Peggy would actually update his Twitter bio, the like location thing to Vultures 2 in Arabic, which is great news because we didn't know that he was going to be on Kanye's team full time. We didn't know if like the Vultures one thing, it was just a one time thing, but it appears as if he is fully in working with Kanye, at least for right now on the fucking team, which for me is awesome. I really hope he has more than just production credits on the next albums. I really, I want to hear him and Kanye on a song together with Peggy having a proper feature. Number one, the attention that would get him is great, but number two, I just think him and Kanye would like have some real chemistry there. But Peggy is in Milan with Kanye. He's with the crew in Italy and everything's going well. He's posting pictures of himself working in the studio until on the night of February 23rd, he posts this video listening to a new mix of Fuck Some. It has Quavo on it and Quavo's verse was left off the official release, but it sounds fucking fire. Seems like an innocent enough video. And then I think it's his girl or something at the end. She comes in and says like, yo, can you, can you sing the song back to me? But I need you to do, you need to edit out the Freddie Gibbs verse or whatever, because it sounds like shit and he ruins the song. It's like, oh shit. shit. Can you just sing Freddie Gibbs' song? I don't like his verse. I don't think like it when you say it because the song is so perfect, but he ruins it because he's... Now the Kanye fans are like, holy shit, he's playing the Quavo version of Fuck Some, it's gonna drop or whatever. And then I'm like, holy shit, Freddie Gibbs is in Italy, we're gonna have a fucking altercation here. This would kickstart a huge beef with Peggy going off about Freddie on Twitter. And Freddie responding in his own unique way as well. Now JPEG Mafia and Freddie Gibbs' beef seemingly started in January of 2024 when Peggy referred to him in that tweet talking about Kanye working with a guy in Freddie Gibbs who was a deadbeat dad had his baby mama fucked on camera and a fake gangster and obviously Peggy didn't have resentment for just no reason according to JPEG Mafia his reason for hating Freddie Gibbs is a combo of Freddie's behavior as a deadbeat dad etc he said all that but also some shade that Freddie allegedly threw at him during the time that JPEG Mafia released LP. Now, I haven't been able to find where that shade was thrown in a lyric, in an interview, etc. I haven't found exactly what Freddie Gibbs said about Peggy. But I have no doubt that something was said, and whatever was said had to be 
pretty fucked up because Peggy has taken this issue on pretty personally. I've never seen someone so passionate about seeing another motherfucker's downfall, honestly. After the Instagram story with Fucksum, Peggy would take to Twitter and start provoking Freddy, wanting him to come and meet him because, let me remind you with this situation right here, they are both in Italy at the same fucking hotel. Peggy would start out saying this, Never got shot at and did nothing. Never got beat up. Never spread my ass online. Baby got no dick dent. I guess I'm the gangster now. And he's really hitting all the points that he has against Freddie Gibbs. Because the getting beat up and not doing anything about it's in reference to Freddie getting uh, beat up by Benny the Butcher's affiliates. The baby with the dick dent is a disgusting way of referring to the fact that there's a video online of Freddie Gibbs's at the time pregnant baby mama having sex on camera with another man and then the spready gibbs stuff we all know about it. I, I really don't want to talk about that especially because that was like revenge porn and i mean in general the, the 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 least amount of time i have to refer to freddie gibbs doing that on camera the more fun we're all gonna have like let's just fucking peggy would keep going after this though reiterating the fact that they're in the same hotel and also bringing up the concept of freddie gibbs's father being a cop which i guess that kind of begs the question whether or not Freddy's past that he talks about in his music a lot of being a drug dealer is legit or not. Freddy would finally respond saying that my haters need to try harder before posting a picture of the food he was eating at the cafeteria at this hotel, basically giving Peggy his location like, you mean what you're saying, let's go. However, Peggy would soon put out a tweet that said, Spready Gibbs is too pussy to talk to me like a man, yay saved you milk dud. Basically insinuating that Kanye told him to leave Freddy alone and not go act on the various things he has been speaking on. But then Freddy would start posting these videos of himself in his room dancing, of himself in the lobby doing all this shit, and we're all like, okay, where is JPEG Mafia? Because he's literally in the fucking lobby and all this shit. And then we learn from Peggy that he checked out of the hotel after Freddy started doing these fucking videos and this was just Freddy taunting him, which is fucking crazy. So I thought this was important to document because there will definitely be a Freddie Gibbs diss or a few bars on the upcoming album aside from this being just completely fucking hilarious. The whole thing kind of ended when Peggy posted the picture of Freddie Gibbs' asshole for everyone to see on Twitter, which was just great. But yeah, this is kind of like his beef during this era. LP had Arm & Hammer. This fucking album's gonna have Freddie, I guess. Unless somehow Kanye could get them to settle their issues and then maybe we have a Freddie Gibbs feature. I doubt that though. But I mentioned how Peggy was really getting into it with people on Twitter. And a lot of people were saying shit like, oh, you need to put down the bottle when you're, get off Twitter when you're drinking or whatever the fuck, blah, blah, blah. To which he would say like, yo, I run a business. Like I need to make money. I need to put out this album. Like I can't be fucked up. I can't afford that. Like what I'm saying is true. It's authentic how I feel. And then someone would be like, oh, with the mention of finishing the album, working on music, they would say, drop it then. To which Peggy would reply and give us an update on this album's progression. He would say this, I will, I've been working on it for a year. Just because I don't say my every move doesn't mean I'm doing nothing. I got you, no worries. And that is pretty much where we're at in regards to what we know about this upcoming JPEG Mafia album. This rollout has been fucking crazy. From Peggy linking up with Kanye and all the controversy that sparked to the whole Freddie Gibbs situation, like, you almost forget that we're here to talk about music. Not that the quality of this record is even in question, like all of Peggy's albums, solo work especially, I'm sure it's gonna be fucking phenomenal. But when an artist is under pressure in the way that Peggy is right now, be that from a sector of his fan base criticizing him so heavily and almost turning on him, to having such a personal beef in front of the whole entire world to see with Freddie Gibbs. You often see artists channel the emotions and the stress that they're dealing with and turn that into art. And in turn, you usually get some pretty fucking phenomenal music. I just hope Peggy realizes that a lot of us, the real fans, fucking love him and appreciate his music so much. But with that being said, as we get closer to the album's release and we learn more details, I will be making more videos on JPEG Mafia specifically with this project, so stay tuned for that. But I gotta plug my socials real quick because I've forgotten like the last two fucking videos. Uh, if you want to know what I'm working on, when I'm putting out a video next, or in general what I'm listening to, go ahead and follow me on Instagram, just Casey Colkin, and Twitter, DigitalXDWNLD. 
But as for now, that is all we know about JPEG Mafia's upcoming solo album. And until new details emerge, I'll see you in the next one.